everybody, and Hello. welcome to Sit and Knit for a Bit, our weekly podcast. And we are, as always, your hosts, Arne and Carlos. Yes. Before we start, we just want to make sure to let you know that this is not a, a knitting podcast. Knitting is among the things we talk about, but we talk about so many other things. And uh, if you don't want to sit and knit with us, you can do other things. You can you can do embroidery, you can do crochet, you could press flowers. That's what we have. That's about. what we've been doing. <laughs> Um, yeah, and we have a great show for you ahead. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things, not only knitting. And uh, yeah, how about a recap, Arne? Yeah, what happened this week? Yeah. What happened to you Well, this last week? week in our life, or previously yeah. in our lives. Yeah, I know you've been doing some shopping. Uh, yeah, I, I've... Uh, st yeah. You so, finished your Christmas. Yeah, no, not quite. But I know that Christmas is coming uh, soon. I mean, very soon. <laughs> and Christmas is going to be very different this year. So uh, I am shopping online. Yeah. I have uh, I have a list, and I'm ticking off all the Christmas stuff that I'm getting, and I'm getting it online, and I'm ordering it now so that it arrives on time, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, that way, I don't have to go out, and I don't have to kind of interact with people during this pandemic, and um, and hopefully by order ordering them now, they will arrive on time, yeah. fingers crossed. I think they want us to stay away from big shopping places. They do, yeah. And it's something like you shouldn't have close contact with more than five people a yeah week? in norway you yeah so is there something wrong with my hair again? no no so but you've got curls today what did you do nothing i think you, you maybe you it's coming back yeah maybe it is or or you might have gone to bed with wet hair no i didn't because i mean i go to if i go to bed <laughs> with wet hair when i wake up my hair is just standing like that all the way up if you go to hair to bed with wet hair I you wake nice up and hair. your hair is gorgeous yeah, you have you look like a champignon a mushroom yeah a mushroom yeah but i come up with gorgeous. no i look like those trolls that have all the hair standing up you know those little <laughs> yeah, 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 the things put on the pencil yeah no no I, I i i'm just thinking that your hair looks really really good <laughs> today oh, and you've you. got curls again yeah. Congratulations! So, thank you. That, that's what happened to me. Okay, last, since we're commenting last... our appearances right now, can I just ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Because um, suddenly I had to rush to come here and sit down. And uh, so when I was looking at the mirror, I noticed my lips were a bit blue. Um, are they still blue? No. No? No. Okay. A little bit maybe, like bluish, but not No, blue. no, no. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, and it's not because we had too much red wine. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, it is early in the morning. It's uh, just before 10 a.m. Uh, European time. Yeah, because and we're doing this and then we leave. Yeah, exactly. Leave, yeah. yeah, we are. So yeah. anyway, what I wanted to say was, it's not because I had too much red wine. Uh, the reason my lips were blue this morning was because we had some porridge, uh, some hot porridge, and today I made this delicious blueberry sauce with and fresh I blueberries so good. Yeah. yeah but but i realized that when i looked at my <laughs> at the mirror my lips were like this deep blue yeah, red always, shade yeah. you so you had them too i guess i had them yeah I, and, I I, and then i took a shower and i guess uh, and brushed my teeth so i guess that it, it, am it, i blue no, 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 you look good. Yeah, but we just don't want people to get the wrong impression and no. think that we drink wine at 10 o'clock in the morning because we don't. Uh, this is not wine, it was blueberries. And yeah, porridge gate is on um, still. Arne is refusing the cold porridge, which means we're not having that anymore. No. But I'm making warm porridges now in the morning. Um, we're doing um, the one with blueberry sauce. I do one with raspberry sauce. The one with pears is still on. And I'm going to do the barley porridge, the one that I do with b barley. Mm -hmm. And then I have dates and almonds, almond milk um, and vanilla. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, um, a barley por porridge with a date caramel sauce and then fresh apple um, and sprinkles of cinnamon. Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. it's, it's a yummy one. Sometimes I have the instant noodles before you wake up. Yeah. And then you can smell it all over the house. Yeah, you've had yeah. Your, your first breakfast, first breakfast and then your... Your second breakfast. Yeah. So yeah, we're still doing porridge gate. Um, <laughs> and yeah, routines is are things that Arne. I know you hate routines. I don't like routines. So it makes me so stressed. Yeah. I like to have variations. That's why I do my coffee thing. We talked about that before. Yeah, we've talked about it Find in one of the quarantine podcasts. Coffee and things like that. Because so I don't like routines. I think you should tell everybody again because this is a, a new podcast. Uh, you talked about this in the quarantine podcast. If you give people that didn't that didn't do the quarantine podcast with us give them a little recap on the, on the routine. sometimes i put all the coffee and the water in the kettle in the evening and then i just press the button the next morning sometimes i do 
the coffee and the water in the morning and press the button. The first thing I do, sometimes I check the internet before I do it or okay. I can take the dogs out before I do the coffee or there's like a lot of different variations so you're because always I can't do the same thing every morning because then I'm so bored so you're always changing things up right yeah. okay so I have a thing I have an idea now because right now I have a feeling that we're getting into a routine you know we do our quarantine podcast we talk for kind of three quarters of the way and then we do our genealogy story and then we keep going and in order to break that routine I think we should do the genealogy story now early on so okay. today we're gonna be uh, looking at Arne's family again and a little bit my family so just take a look at this so I really love it Arne I, I love that photograph of you kind of like yarn bombing your ancestors. <laughs> well, you did too. Yeah, it was your great grandfather. And my great great grandmother. There you go, yeah. And who are you going to talk about today? Today I will tell you the story about the guy in the picture, the great grandfather, mm. Ole. Oh, in the photo that you're yarn bombing. Yeah, because you... because I think we have that's where we have that link. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think because of your great no. Yeah, my great grandfather, <laughs> my my great grandfather Einar, who was born in uh, what, uh, nine, no 1876, I think it was. Yeah, so, so he's like a little bit older than my great grandfather because Ule, you said his name was Ule. Ule, because he was born in 1884, mm -hmm. and he was like your uh, Kuskun Carson. He was like a coachman. I think we have a Norwegian word of the day. Kusk. 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 K U S K, Kusk. Kuskin. It's the coachman, the one that drives the carriages. K U S K. We're going to put that down in the blog for you guys to study. Yeah. So, my great grandfather, he was like a Kusk for, on, on a hotel on the farm. So, he was a like coachman. A coachman on a neighboring farm called Weisten. And my father, he was, I think it's called tenant in English. Tenant. Well, your father owned a farm. No, he didn't own that farm. He rented. The, or no, but he owns. He had his own farm. He had his own farm, and then he used the, so, the land. Oh, on okay. The farm. Okay, so he he owned a farm, and then he, in addition to that, he rented land to increase his ar ar agriculture, yes. so that he could grow more things. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. That's that farm, and so so, so, so like hang on. My father, he was like using the land, and my grandmother, she was working in the rooms. Wait, and wait, just hang on. I don't understand. So you were saying. The hotel was on the land that your dad yeah, yeah, yeah. rented. It was a small farm. Oh, okay. Now but I get. They, they had a hotel and. Oh, okay. I understand now. So, so, so it was a, a hotel slash farm, uh, and your dad rented the the land. Yeah, because the people who owned the farm they were really old, or, and the hotel, so they they just. Oh, okay. I get they that, had I get the it. hotel, but they didn't use the far, the the farm anymore. Oh, okay. So my father he used. He used the land. The land. But did he do that during your great grandfather's time, or during the story you're going to tell? Or? No, because then my great great grandfather he had stopped being a kusk because the cars came. Oh, okay. You see, I'm okay. old. I rem I don't remember these things, but <laughs> I know. Well, well the but cars came. One day he had to stop because the cars took over. Okay. That, that's what happened. But the cars came long before uh, your dad long was born. Long before. But anyway, I'm going to let you tell the story. <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm so excited. <laughs> but maybe they didn't come so early where we, where I grew up. You never know. You never know. No, no. okay. So, my great grandfather, he was actually, was then the Kusk, and he was picking up people in Lillehammer and took them up to Gostar, where, the, where I, I came from. Okay. Come from. And some of the people he drove from Lillehammer, they were those artists. Mm -hmm. They called them Lillehammer artists because they stayed a lot of the time in Lillehammer. And then they also stayed a lot of time in Gostar, where I come from, on this farm called Weisten. And when they were not in Norway, they went to Paris or okay. Rome. Yeah, that, and one of the guys that my great grandfather knew, his name was Trudval Eriksen. And I think maybe he can be a link to your mm. great grandfather. Okay, and Be how? Because he also lived in Paris and he studied in Paris. He studied in another school. Your your was in. Uh, yeah. So um, I that? yeah I told everybody last week that Wikipedia was wrong and that my great grandfather didn't study in Paris. But as a matter of fact, I had a, I I looked it up because my great grandfather is in the in Swedish Encyclopedia of Artists. And that is where Wikipedia actually 
got the information. Yeah. And it turns out that my great grandfather studied in Florence and in Paris. Yeah. In Paris, he studied at the Académie Colarossi, uh, which was there until the 1930s, mm -hmm. around there. So uh, my grandfather, who was born in uh, 1876, more than likely would have studied at the Académie Colarossi in the end of the 19th century. My great, oh sorry, my grandfather was born in 1904, so it would have been before that. Yeah. So, I think maybe they had a link, but but this guy, he didn't go to that school. He went to another school, like a painter school. I don't remember the name, but it wasn't the same school. But I know that a lot of the artists from Scandinavia, mm -hmm. uh, they met. Okay. In, when they were in Paris, they met in restaurants and had wine and. Absinthe. Absinthe, yeah. I think that so, was the cheapest one, maybe. So they had yeah. That. And if you think about it, so my <laughs> great grandfather would have been in abroad. He would have spent a long time living in Paris and in Italy, yeah. and uh, he would have probably felt homesick. Yeah, and, and probably met this guy. In yeah, Paris. and he would have longed to speak his own language. Yeah. Now, my grandfather, my great grandfather, was Swedish, not Norwegian. However, uh, our languages are uh, related so much so that we. Can understand each other you know i speak swedish to our and speaks norwegian to me and we understand each other perfectly um so you kind of can compare it to mm -hmm. british english american english australian english south african english same kind of language same grammar but maybe some words are different but you usually know those words so yeah my great great grandfather would have probably longed to meet other people and speak his own language probably. and it is so, highly likely that they would have met i think it's strange if they didn't meet, because if they spent time in Paris at the same time, they probably yeah. would have been. They're in Paris, they're at the same time, and they're artists. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So, I think we have a link there. So... And, uh, and also my great-grandfather, he told me, like, stories about this guy. I, I, I found a book about him. Uh, his, his, his name was Thorvald Eriksen. It's this book. So that's the painter, one of the painters that my great grandfather mm. knew. Okay. And all these pictures in this book is from Lillehammer and Ghost Star. Mm -hmm. And my grand great grandfather said that once he had to come down to the, like the plaza in front of the church with a horse, and then he was standing in different spots on the plaza, and this artist was doing sketches of him and the horse. Okay. So the picture was like. It was like a busy day in front of the church, but there was only my great grandfather and one horse. But the painting had a lot of horses and people, and then so you spent a whole day walking whole around day with walking a horse, walking around with a horse, and posing for him and to paint. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? Do you remember? Someone has to do that. Also. Yeah. Do you remember in two thousand and seven what we did? Oh, you shouldn't ask me about this. I okay. Never so do you remember, remember that very that very <laughs> first book that we did? The very first book that we did, that is not a knitting book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember what we made your father do? He was posing with a horse. For us. For us. So, in one of the sweaters that I made in the 80s. Yeah. I think it was a sweater from 1950s, and I put all the 80s color on it, and he is still so he history, was wearing it. Yeah, so history is repeating itself in, uh, in 1880, no, sorry, in 1900, uh, your, your great-grandfather was walking around with a, with a horse, posing for people to paint him, <laughs> and in 2007 we were photographing him. And uh, if we had land, we would have horses, but we don't have, we don't have horses. We? we have, you mean you and me? Yeah. Yeah, but your dad had a lot of he horses. He had horses, but I collect horses, so mm. that's my substitute for a real horse. Yeah, I, collect I love horses. horses too. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I rode a little bit when I was a kid, not yeah. much, but a little bit. Uh, but yeah, okay, so cool. Um, and that's <laughs> and, history repeating itself. Yeah, itself. And, and I have to show a picture because there's a picture here painted in the in where I come from because he painted winter pictures when he was in Gaustal in this hotel. Oh, so he spent winters there? Yeah, so I saw in, on his biography that he spent like on sometimes three months mm. in the winter from December to February just painting. And this is this called this, this picture is called. Horses in snow. Okay. From Vestre Gaustal. That's where. And I your granddad's there. So this is probably the. Uh, I think I re I recognize the mountains and stuff. So okay. this is like somewhere in between our farm and this farm. I think and you need to go cl a little bit closer if you can. That's the. And can you see there are horses on the picture and the, there are two dots there, two black dots. <laughs> Maybe one of those dots are my great grandfather. Maybe, yeah, let me Maybe see. Maybe it was him and see. our horses. Because we, 
I mean, yeah, I, I see, I see, I see a tiny little dot there. It's very insignificant. Yeah. Maybe it's my great grandfather and my father. Yeah. Because when I grew up, we had two horses, so that could be the two horses. Well, it couldn't be your father. No, it was too early. Because it was painted in 1907. Oh, so it was my great grandfather and my yeah. grandmother then. Probably, yeah. Lovely, very cute. And yeah, I'm sure the dots. Um, let me no, see if I can see. No, it couldn't be my uh, grandmother. She was born in 1910. Oh, okay. It's someone else. And is there a family <laughs> resemblance there? Let's oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very difficult to tell. If I go like way back in the picture, so I look like a dot. Yeah. So if yeah. we're fantasizing about the connection between your family and my family, so the, say that the connection goes back in time, and it goes back to before 1904, mm -hmm. so before my grandfather was born. Uh, it starts in Paris. Yeah. It starts by my great-grandfather studying there, studying art in Paris at the Académie Colarossi. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have another artist, a Norwegian artist, studying at another academy there. Yeah. And in the evenings they meet, they hang out, and drink wine. they drink absinthe, absinthe. and wine, and, um, and, and then you kind of have this whole Moulin Rouge idea, uh, right? Yeah. The, you know the movie? Yeah. Yeah, kind of that. The, or Toulouse Lautrec, yeah. the artist, you know, that if it kind wasn't, of... It, it must have been like that. It, yeah, exactly, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Picasso is there yeah. and, and all of those others, obviously. So, uh, but yeah, the, the Scandinavians tend to congregate. Wherever you go abroad and there's like a expat community of, of, of people, Scandinavians together. will stick together for sure. So, uh, so yeah, so basically your great-grandfather and my great-grandfather, we don't have uh, evidence, no. but they were connected through this guy the Lillehammer artist yeah. so if <laughs> so if your great grandfather driving your driving the Lillehammer art, artist would have said you know like having small talk would have said so how was Paris did you meet any interesting people did you meet anybody from Scandinavia then the artist would have said oh yeah, yeah I met, I met Einar Sakison yeah. uh, who is my dear friend yeah. um, and that's our link that is cool. I, I, I like I like yeah. thinking of that. Yeah. And I love it like when I, when you showed the aquarelle you had, the sketch, the colors. It's very similar to the colors he was using. Yeah, so I think styles. they all had like the yeah. same inspiration and it was like that the way they painted. Yeah. At that time. But I also know that wealthy people back then and uh, um, I my great grandfather came from a wealthy family, an upper class family. So uh, people back then they would go out abroad on the grand tour, mm. but they would also do um, they also would also go mountain trekking and and doing these kinds of things in the summer. So it could have been yeah. that my great grandfather and his family oh, came to Norway. Talking about that, that's another story because when my great grandfather was a Kusk, okay, there is actually two stories. Remember, Kusk is the coachman, yeah. right? The first story is that like when he was. He started when he was very little. How young was he? I don't know, maybe. You seven, mean young? Maybe. You mean little or, or short? Or both? Both. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a strange question. Well, you said, you said he started when he was very little, and I was thinking, okay, was he, was, was he young or was, or was he short? Is that a stupid oh, question? Yeah. He was young. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> he was young. <laughs> he wasn't short. Okay. Sorry. Ah, uh, I'm getting warm. <laughs> no, he was young, and then he he went. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> No. I, thought it was, I just see this. I just see this gigantic carriage, and I see this tiny yeah, little relative of little. yours. It was little. Because your dad's also a little short. <laughs> <laughs> he was shorter. Okay, yeah. okay. So because, sorry. Because he went to Lilyhammer to pick up this guy, and then there was like grown ups there telling this guy in the carriage that he had to keep an eye on my great grandfather so he didn't fell off the wagon. Okay, so he was short. He was short. He was like, maybe he was like seven years old. I don't so, know. A, a coachman at seven years old? Yeah. Wow. That's Norway in the old days. You had yeah, to yeah. start to work. Yeah, early. that's in the old days when you could just get in a car and drive without a, a driver's permit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't do that. No, but no. My, my, <laughs> my, 
but uh, anyway. But did you I, drive the tractor when you were very little? No, I, I mean, didn't like the tractor. No, but we, we My know... My father did. He didn't have a driver's yeah, license. Yeah, and our nephews, <laughs> uh, <laughs> both our nephews uh, from, well, your brother's kids. Oh, people will be shocked now. Yeah, well, yeah, they'll be shocked to know that both our nephews uh, started driving the tractors when they were <laughs> 12, but 13 years old. But I started to work on the farm, I guess, long before I was seven. Yeah. But in that, those days, they send their kids out to work. But you weren't working, you were helping out. It's a big difference. Oh, that's a big difference. Your grandmother would... He was paid, I guess. He started to smoke the pipe when he was like six. Your great grandfather? Yeah. Oh he, my. He learned from his father, and his yeah. father gave him the, a pipe. And he started to smoke when he was six years old. Those are the good old days when people didn't know better. <laughs> okay, so are you sure it was so good? No, it wasn't good at all. No, uh, no I'm talking about... Um, I mean, I don't smoke, so no, I, I don't like no, it. No, I don't smoke. But you, we talked about, you said like walking... Yeah, yeah, happens. so yeah. we're digressing again. So but that was just, another story. Yeah, but hang on, because this is so <laughs> hilarious. So you've got your tiny little great-grandfather. He's almost like a little, like a little elf, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's... Driving the horse carriage yeah. with these little or with these large uh, Lillehammer artists. No, no, this was another guy. It was the first, his first customer. Oh, his first customer. I have his, I have the name. He was from Lillehammer. So when he retired at the age of, I don't know. I mean, when did cars come to <laughs> your area? Say the nineteen twenties. He had, he had had a good long career mm. then because he started so young. Maybe nineteen twenties. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, this is so good, funny. Good career, but that was probably part of the. Mm. Maybe he did other But your dad things. took over too. Because your dad has always loved doing uh, yeah, he's horses. Been, but no, he, he, he wasn't the coach. He used the horse on the farm. Oh, I have, I have seen a couple of photos of your grand or of your dad uh, driving the, the priest. Well, yeah, he, he drove on a lot of priests. <laughs> 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 that, that, that's what you do if you see a P priest or a pope or anything like A pope? <laughs> not a pope, maybe. A bishop. Put them in the cabin. No, uh, in the put, carriage. No, put, put them in the carriage and you drive with them. Because well, like, if there are like something happening in the, in the community... It, they always booked your dad to drive They booked them. my father to drive the priest or the yeah. bishop or And something. he had that beautiful sled. Yeah. That sled. Oh, that's such a that beautiful, yeah, beautiful sled. And then that the beautiful Norwegian fjording. Yeah. They are such powerful horses. And then you've got Arnes again, not so very tall uh, father, <laughs> uh, <laughs> driving the little. Oh, I don't think he whipped them, did he? No, no he didn't whip them. He was driving, you know, hoo hoo, driving the the, the horse with <laughs> the sled. That's the, that's the Santa. Claus. Well, yeah, but didn't he pretend to be Santa as well? Or <laughs> of course. <laughs> Anyway, I think oh. we're really digressing. But uh, you, what, what were we about about my, my my grandfather coming out for holidays in Norway? That's yeah, where we and were. that's that's where that's another story. The, the other story. Mm -hmm. So the first story was about he being so little, so tiny, and the other story is about one time he went to Lillehammer and he picked up an English lady. Oh, a, she, a real she lady. She came to our area to walk in the mountains. Like a like a, a nobility, lady. like from the. I, I guess it was because that that at that time when there was a lot of posh ladies coming yes. to walk the mountains, and he said he said in this book I read where he was interviewed that um, he remembered there was this English lady mm. that she, he drove, and she was very nice, but he didn't understand a word, so they didn't speak much. But then when I read that, I remember I found this book because I haven't read this book. Yet. So I found another thing which I found interesting, mm. and this this book is about from uh, it's written by a lady called Emily Love. It's actually it's a Norwegian. Well, there's two authors. Okay, but it's about Emily Love, and she traveled in Norway in 1856. Wow! And that's almost. Yeah, I guess I the mean, times were similar to when my great grandfather was driving people. So I'm gonna read this book mm, because I want to read it too. Years. I want to read it too. You know, I don't know how much people are interested in facts, but I'm gonna give you some anyway. Um, back in those days, you'd go on the grand tour. The grand tour would have been Italy and France, right? Uh, which my great grandfather did. But you would also come to Scandinavia back in those days mm. in the summers because uh, it was cooler here than in many other places. So they come here and enjoy beautiful Norwegian and Scandinavian summer weather and uh, it was very 
common. Um, I think that one of the most famous tourists from those days, I mean, Queen Victoria is very connected to Nice and the south of France, where she spent a lot of her winters, mm -hmm. right? And one of her relatives, Kaiser Willem, yeah, he, he spent a lot of summers in, on his yacht, on the west going up and down the coast of Norway, all the way up to Nordkap and down again. He was very, very well known for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was quite common uh, for posh people to come. Yeah. Um, back in those days. And look in this picture. That's the... Oh, there's your dad and the or your great great. This is how they looked. Yeah. At that time, look at this. That's the Kusk. So this is probably how my great grandfather looked when he was in his carriage. Not yes. as big as the one you used with the Kusk. Oh Carson. yeah, Carson. That's a big one. Coachman. Yeah, that was a bigger carriage. Yeah, That's and a it big had. Carriage. It was pulled by four horses, I think. Yeah. This is actually, I have to look through this book. There are drawings of people with folk costumes. Oh, nice. Love that. And these are, they're, they're old, yeah. these pictures. 1859 is this from. So you know what, Arne? I'm, okay. starting, I'm starting to get into this genealogy <laughs> stuff now. But I realized last week that I am actually terrible at it. I have, mix up I have so many problems, whether <laughs> it's my grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, my great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. Um, I think I mentioned uh, last uh, week that my grandfather was born in three different dates. I think I said uh, 1867 so and then I like did 18... approximately. Yeah, no, it's just that I get all the dates wrong and I get all the who were they, like, you know what? It's kind of as confusing to me as crochet terms in UK well, that's hard, or crochet yeah. are, are, are confusing to you. It's yeah, really, really. I find that hard, but I can easily, easily, like, I know my relatives. Yeah, but it's really difficult. But I'm getting there, right? Yeah. But it's different because, like, remember also, like, you were, you were always traveling when you were a kid. You that's lived true, in different yes. countries and different places, yeah. so you didn't have that close relationship with your relatives? Now I remember, I was gonna, I was gonna say something and I forgot. Um, so when you said that thing about your great-grandfather meeting the, the lovely British lady mm -hmm. and he didn't understand anything, um, I love that quote from your grandmother. So in my family, um, like my, my father had to learn German and French when he was young. Uh, my you great-grandfather uh, spoke all these languages as well. We've always had languages. In, and you speak in, like seven. I speak like... several languages, but I, I, I always love... I'm going to quote your grandmother now, okay? Huh? And it's kind of thinking of that. So Arna's grandmother used to say, you know, if they don't understand what I'm saying, I just speak louder. And eventually they will understand if they, if want, they want to. to. I think that's that's pretty much that that's sums up quote. your your. Uh, yeah. So they're just as good in languages as we just are. Just scream and hopefully they understand you. That's that's what we did when I was little. Yeah. Or we didn't say anything. Yeah. I guess my great grandfather didn't open his mouth. Or or maybe he just spoke Norwegian. Yeah. Like to save the situation. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, uh, anyway, it was it's funny yeah. huh, that we have that connection. Okay, so uh, lots of things have happened uh, Lately. in the past. We, we need to go back to that because I surprised you with, a, with an early, uh, you know, meet our relatives uh, and that, genealogy uh, story. You know, the most exciting thing that happened this week, uh, again, is the post. The po yeah, we had some really nice stuff in yeah. the post. And as you know, we've got these uh, mugs, the Arne and Carlos mugs. I'm going to show you this, right? These are uh, something you can get. And when you buy things like this from us, merchandise, you support our channel. But you should, you should use the other But one. yeah, the other ones are a little bit more festive. So I think that we're going to, you know, why don't we just pour over uh, the contents in our mugs. And don't pour on the tablecloth. Okay, let's... There we go. <laughs> Okay. I Let think this is much better. Now, we've done a little festive limited edition mug, as you can see. Christmas. Um, it's got the, um, the our beetle, and there's a Christmas tree and some Christmas balls. And yeah, this is much, much better for, uh, for, for Christmas. Christmas. And if you want to get these, you can get them uh, through the links below or through our blog. Um, and, and, you know, it is great to, to have nice a little have Christmassy thing now. We're mm -hmm. getting closer to the season. And there's a story about this uh, picture. So there's a, there's a beetle, obviously ours, and there's a Christmas <laughs> tree, obviously ours. Um, and we'll tell you the story during the Advent thing. And we save it for that. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been doing this week, Arne? I've, I've been doing, uh, I've been knitting on the leftover sweater, mm -hmm. leftover yarn sweater. And 
I put my knitting in this beautiful bag we got. Oh yeah, because Not we only, also got yeah. the bag with the beetle. Our, our beloved beetle. Yeah. So not only did we do the the mugs, we also did the uh, the so bag. Now I have all my my leftover yarn sweater things in this one. So I finished the body. Mm hmm. The body adi adi. The body adi adi, and I have to, have to tell you that you can't use this, Carlos, because you don't like this length because you're, you're longer. Yeah, we already had this discussion. Arne was trying on the sweater and telling me the length that the sweater was going to be. Um, and then I was telling him that it was a little too short because I was thinking about myself very selfishly. When Arne said, yes, but I don't want to have a longer sweater than this. I'm thinking, I'm not going to wear a cropped sweater. There's no way. No, but I can make one for you. And yeah. then I just take, I take this part, this report, or this pattern and put it up here again. Thank you. Yeah. And then you will have. So you like, make me a new. You make me one as well. Yeah. Then you will have like seven centimeters more. Yeah. That should be enough. Because I'm taller than Arne is, and I have a longer upper torso than he is. Yeah, because is, so, I'm, I'm small. Or upper body. I'm small. It runs in the family. <laughs> You're not short. <laughs> short. <laughs> something ha something happens every generation, and and you kind of stretch a little bit. Yeah, more. you always stretch. And then you remember, uh, your mother was the first outsider in 900 years yeah, who to came to the valley to ca who came to the valley and married your dad so she brought a lot of new blood that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> and she maybe brought some jeans that made you a little taller than than your dad is because <laughs> he's he's really tiny your dad <laughs> he's not that tiny he's like normal tiny yeah okay <laughs> what's that <laughs> Oh, you're in a good mood. Oh, thank uh, look, you. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm starting on the, um, the sleeve. Yeah. The sleeve. Oh, you changed the colorway here on this one compared to here. Yeah, because it doesn't here have it's... to be the same. So I changed a little bit. It's the same on the in the beginning. Yeah, but this is not. This is and a new colorway. I, yeah, very nice. I didn't do the green under. I, I changed it there. Mm. But this is like, you have to do that when you use left Yeah, right. and you know what, I always find asymmetry and things that are not matchy-matchy, I find them more intriguing and exciting than if yeah. everything oh, is, you know, kind of the same. So yeah, it's a lovely, it's a lovely sweater. You know what, instead of, instead of you knitting one for me, I might actually give that a go when I finish doing um, yeah, because we have so Christmas much of balls. this yarn. I we know. have to, have to do, like we do the blocks, we do... This is the Schahenmeyer Merino Extra Fine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm working on the crochet blankets. Mm -hmm with also with leftover yarns and some of them are not leftover yarns either there's like two bolts in each yeah, color and yeah. that's that's everything we have so you so, have to do this or so, hats so you've been working on this yeah. you i've been ordering christmas gifts we've been I know, doing i know yeah and i was so surprised that you didn't have any reaction when i said the first when you in the when we started this you said you were doing some shopping you bought christmas gifts mm -hmm. on the, on the internet? internet yeah oh yeah i'm pretty and much I said, done. yeah i know and, and you were like there was no reaction Are, aren't you afraid that i know actually what you bought no but i because uh, i haven't bought anything for I you i saw that you bought something for me no you did not because i didn't buy anything for you yet <laughs> I've only bought stuff for uh, other, you know, I've bought other things. Oh, you're nervous now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I you bought know, other when things. When you do this, you have to delete the email when they confirm that I you have used your card. And you also have to go to the... Excuse me, I have deleted... the garbage can and you have to clean it because I, we have a computer where both emails are. I have deleted every single track and there is no way you'll ever find out what I bought for you. Okay, so you have to wait until the... Yeah, but the how stuff about is coming so I can press? But like, how about me? I deleted deleted all the emails that said thank oh, you. You bought. With so them. you got me a gift. I got you a gift. Okay. Two gifts actually. Interesting. I bought, interesting. Bought you two gifts. And they're coming by email or by DHL. <laughs> <laughs> it's air. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just bought you something you have to print. Really. No. Okay, so the, the, there's a thing about me, and <laughs> the thing about me is I really do not like surprises. Uh, I like to find out everything, and I, I give Arne a hard time because he always has to hide everything from me, especially during Christmas. I have like I have a lot of secret places in the house where I yeah. hide stuff, but I also I, I, actually it's really easy to hide stuff, especially in the room. This room where I work. Yeah, the messy room. It's so crowded and for you it's impossible to find yeah, anything. Yeah. 
I know that you had, you know, one of my secret places. Yeah, yeah, that that was the first place. I was gonna look in the dollhouse to see if I could find something there. But now that you say that I know that place, probably there's nothing gonna be there. No, I would I would never post a spoiler. Like when everybody watched Downton Abbey, um, I would never post a spoiler, but people got really upset if they read spoilers. I'm that kind of person that actually actively looks for spoilers because I can't wait. I just cannot wait. And it's the same with Christmas. I want to find out everything I can. So I'm terrible at that. But you have, become, so you have become better and better at hiding gifts uh, from me. Yeah. And then I don't want to spoil it for you. So um, now I'm just going to, I'm not going to be able to sleep for the next what, 40 <laughs> days until I figure out what you bought. And I have to me. run to the post box every time something comes well, in. If because it, if, if, if you at the in the box before me you open well but i'm just going to give you some news in case it's being shipped with dhl yeah. they might actually come and hand deliver it to the door so you may better be careful huh that i'm not standing there but receiving. you never open the door if dhl is coming because you're always in your underwear or your long what do you mean something must yeah. so every time there's a dhl car coming or the postman knocks on the door he's like oh no there's someone on the door and then I said, why don't, why don't you open your downstairs? And then I said, I don't have my trousers. <laughs> yeah. It's always or, like that. Or I'm, wearing, or I'm wearing my pajamas. <laughs> or I'm just being really lazy. I, I might be dressed in everything. <laughs> and I might just be, you know, lying on the sofa we'll reading a book. today because we're going to Lilyhammer after this. And you have put on your jeans. Yes. That's not daily. I'm, gr I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, because everybody is so curious about the, um, the, folk the folk costumes and how we're getting on. And as you can see, there's no vests hanging here. We finished our vests, both of them. Um, the only thing missing, well, we didn't finish them, but we finished everything. The only thing we are missing is the buttonholes, the buttonholes. Uh, which we will do later. Uh, but other than that, they're done. Um, and uh, mine took a little bit longer than expected because of um, a few issues with fitting. But I had also issues. Yeah, but yours, but, yours but, were easier to deal with, you said. No, I think that your, when, when I tried your on the first time, you looked so good, it was like perfect. Yeah. And then we started to make it more complicated. Yeah. And in the end, it was a lot of work, but I think mine was harder, actually. You think? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah, well, maybe, yeah. You don't have all those strange things on your, like, I'm a little bit crooked. And, oh, I yeah. think it's, you know what, you're unique. Oh, yeah. And you're, that's, you're unique. Too. That's what we love about yeah. you. Your uniqueness you and your talent <laughs> and your humor. But, but that's what, that's not what we're talking no. about. No, but yeah, yeah. So the we're vests, going to Lilyhammer. yeah, the vests are done. Um, and um, in Norway, um, I don't know how you say blue potan. In uh, English, blood on your oh, teeth. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I, I, blueberry I know. on your teeth, maybe. Blueberry on my teeth. I hope not. <laughs> How are my teeth? No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Um, and and you know you know uh, once you get a taste for something, you just want to keep going. That must be an English. Word that's for it. well in Norwegian it's blue portan. You get blood on your tooth. And that pretty much means that you want more. Yeah. Once you've tried something that you really enjoy, you just don't want to stop. And what we realized making the vests is that we love them so much that we want to make the tartan as soon as possible. So today, after we finish the podcast, we're going to get in the car, we're going to drive to Lilyhammer and select the tartan fabric. Uh, and I was, I'm going to do a little factual thing again, very quickly. <laughs> uh, but I, I said it already last week, if you were with us last week, we were doing the, um, the vests. Um, and the vests that we were doing... Um, they're in brocade, or brocade, in brocade, and uh, people were very surprised over the fact that we have some freedom to choose, mm -hmm. um, and we do, but it's still very limited. So there's 10, about 10 brade fabrics that we can choose from, 10 designs. That's a lot of freedom in the that's, world that's of folk. That's quite a lot of freedom. <clears throat> and if in addition to that, you can also choose um, four or five different tartans for the, uh, for the vest if you're choosing a tartan vest, and they're different. So the brocade vest uh, is, uh, and, and this is the thing, I was calling it a waistcoat coat. <laughs> West coast? No, I was calling it a waistcoat <laughs> last week. And then when I was saying the, the, the buttoning, I was saying that the brocade uh, coat was uh, single waisted because of waistcoat. But I meant, so obviously I meant 
single-breasted. Yeah, but your, your, your English is not your first language. No, that's but true. But you're doing pretty well, I think, because if you think about what I said last week, what did you, you remember? Say? I had the bad beagle in New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not food poisoning. Yeah, you met a bagel. I met a bagel. I don't eat dogs. <laughs> okay. Maybe hot dogs, but not beagles. Okay, okay. Oh, I don't want to... Oh, God. Eating <laughs> so a dog. Don't eat a bad beagle. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some pops, people thought you actually said you caught a beetle instead of a bug. You know, like catching a bug, oh, getting a cold. I, I got the bug. Yeah. I and the bug. And oh. they thought you said you caught a beetle. So well, not a uh, beagle, but a beetle. You a know, beetle. a bug, a yeah. beetle. That's what we call the There's car. There's room for confusion in this. There's a lot of room, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, yeah, the, co the coats, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> the coats are either double-breasted or, or the waistcoats. They're double-breasted or single-breasted. The bro brocade coat is single-breasted with a shawl collar. Mm -hmm. However, the tartan coat is double-breasted. And they have these things. They have like lapels. They have la beautiful lapels. Patty lapel. <laughs> no, not patty lapel. <laughs> but, but by the way, she did a mean concert. Remember, remember, <laughs> Isn't that a, in, a nice in, name, Patty Lapel. Yeah. Okay. So now we're really digressing. But in two thousand and four, when um, the Nobel Prize winner was uh, the Peace Prize winner was the African, uh, uh, what was her name, Wangari Maathai or something? Mm, uh, she was wonderful, amazing. She she wanted Patty La Lapel. She wanted Patti LaPelle to La come. LaBelle. LaBelle, that's it. To sing. To sing at the Nobel Peace Concert. She was concert. like the showstopper. And she it was amazing. It was the best. She was so good. We have to watch it on, on the national TV. Yeah, if we can find it. Yeah. It was the best Nobel concert we ever saw, uh, the Peace Concert. Mm -hmm. I think her the, the Nobel Prize winner was, or laureate was, one. I think her name was Wangari. And was she was the one, one that ones. she was the. You see, we haven't prepared yeah. this because uh, when you talk about that West and you say lapel. It oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, we're really digressing. We have yeah. a petty lapel. But she was the. She got the Nobel Prize for microeconomies ah. and and uh, enabling women um, in in Africa. I think it was a fantastic thing uh, what she was doing. And then Patty Lapel <laughs> or Labelle. <laughs> came to that incredible yeah. concert. Yeah. It was it was fantastic. Cool. But um, what, what were we talking about? But anyway, yeah, we're really like, oh yeah. yeah we're the, going to Lilyhammer to get those West Yeah, coats. so double, double breasted. Uh, yeah, we're getting the tartan coats. Double breasted coats. with yes. the lapel. That's what we're doing. So uh, I'm already dressed. All I need, and I'm wearing a white shirt. Yeah, you so, think about everything. Yeah, all I'm going to do when I go there is I'm going to just take off the uh, my, my, um, my cardigan. Yeah. And I'm going to try on the, the different uh, waistcoats to see the fabrics and see which one uh, I love I love the most. The Sinclair is uh, uh, predominant for our region, mm -hmm. so I may go for that. But then there's other var uh, varieties. Maybe of there are tartan. some local variations also, but I yeah. think it would be interesting, like, when we get the fabric, we can check if there's we like find four... the original in the book with quilts. Yeah, there's like four or five. Quilts? Quilts. Kilts, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. one day we'll tell you the story of how we came to wear tartan uh, vest waistcoats in Norway. But anyway, yeah, I we got a taste of the waistcoats and we decided that we wanted that as well. So Maria is gonna is gonna um, we're just gonna choose the fabric. She already measured us and fitted us, so she knows what our bodies look like. Yeah. And we're gonna she, we're gonna get it pre-cut. So she's gonna pre-cut all the all the parts and then we'll sew it together just um, as we did with yeah. the others and we have to also to look at the trouser and get some tips because now we have to start to make the trousers and yeah like even if we have sewn before this is different so it is yeah there's a lot of solu solutions hmm. but it was great taking a break we finished our vests on on thursday hmm. and after thursday we've just uh, been relaxing uh, reading books and doing things we don't usually do. I mean, what have you been doing that been you usually doing don't do? I've been or yeah. my art journals. I yeah. haven't done that for maybe a year. So do you have one here? So I took it out to get this week. So where is it? So I, I think we made a video once where we showed how to make the books or something. Either how to make them or how to decorate them. I can't yeah, remember. I don't remember, but this is like we sold these books. They look like this of recycled paper. So there's like... We have a lot of this mm. recycled paper in the house and then we just 
glue in pictures that inspire. So and I have to say, I haven't seen you do this for quite some time. No, I think it's one year ago. More, I think more. Yeah. So I look at like on these pages, I have like collections of different uh, embroidery stitches and stuff. So we Very collect nice. all these things, and we put them in these books. And we also I also played with this, uh, like instead of sketching, we find pictures of people in commercials, and then we cut out what they're wearing, and we put other stuff under and glue them. So I'm really happy with these two. This is. This is one of the sketches. We don't know if this will be something, but it's cool. And then this is another one. And this is just the painting we I found in the magazine. Mm -hmm. And I just ripped it in two. So one part is the top of the painting and the other one is the bottom. Oh, okay. So you've glued... I can see what you've done. You've pretty much glued... I glued you've glued some other design or print and then you've painted the or you've drawn well, the arms the outline and mark the arms and this could be the beginning of a new collection could who knows be. but it's a really nice i like to work this mm. way sometimes because we, when, like sometimes we just do sketches and sometimes it stops so yes then it's really nice to go back and do it's very abstract it's a very abstract way of working you start by just doing something very artistic and then gradually you work uh, ideas until you actually have something uh, to go by. Look, this so, is a nice um, page. yeah, oh yeah, that's such a cute this little. This is a nice page. Cute little uh, mitten. This 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 picture of the girl is from a Japanese magazine, and it's like a pop up thing. So you open it like that, and then this this mitten is a gift we got from mm. someone who was cleaning their attic, and I just put it in the book. Cool. Nice. So this week we're not going to do any, any unboxings of any sort, uh, except we did show you the mugs that we got. Uh, however, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a reveal here because we've got this. Well, yeah, we had and this is, this it, people may have been, you know, because you've, you've been seeing it since, it since we started the podcast, right? And so what is this? This is a flower press, actually. We bought it some 20 years ago, mm. uh, 18 years ago. Uh, I think it was... At a little, it was like in a barn. It was in a barn. It was near Hama. I think it was near, near, near Hama, yeah. and we were on the way to the airport. Yeah, um, I remember that. And we bought this, but we didn't buy it to press flowers. We bought it in order to to press books because uh, because all these books we do are yeah. So we recycle paper. We sew the paper, make pages, and then we make the hard covers of the book. Um, and when you do the hard covers, there's some gluing involved, and then you yeah. need to press for a few days. So um, we actually used this for 18 years to press books. And then um, through our Japanese agent, we got a commission for a Japanese magazine about pressed flowers or flowers. Mm. Um, and they asked us if we could do four collages for them, uh, fall, winter, spring, and summer. And um, we actually, this here is Fall. This is fall. Yeah, this is fall. We, we got the commission in September. In September. So, so it was a little bit late for spring flowers. Yeah. So in September, we got the commission, and the first thing we did was go out and pick different plants from our garden and then bring them in here um, and press them. And they have been in this press since the beginning of September. And, um, and they're going to become the fall collage. We're going to do. We're gonna do like big boards. I almost with... for forgot about it, but then when I started the scrapbooking, I went to look for the magazine. Yeah, and, and you know, our, oh, you know, Setsu is gonna start asking, "Where is the? <laughs> where is your work?" Yeah. So we thought that instead of uh, doing an unboxing today, we could do a reveal and we could show you what we pressed. Or see what happened. Yeah, see what happened and show you what we pressed uh, so for three. It. So it's been it's been here all of September, yeah. all of October, mm -hmm. and uh, so two and a half, uh, two and a half months. It should be dry now. This would be exciting. So take take your balls away. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so let's see. So this is mostly wildflowers because we had people from our fan club in Japan. They yes. came to Norway and they were more interested in the wildflowers than the garden flowers. So that's why. Mm. This is this is nice. Look at the seeds. Oh yeah. Oh oh, I love that. That came out nice. That came out really nice. That's uh, so beautiful. Is that like uh, clover? Mm-hmm. 
And look here, this a is red clover. This is one of these things that grows uh, wild. Is it a schling? I don't know. Is it a schling? Uh, it's a wild flower. Oh, I love how they're coming out. Oh, and look at this the roses. Is, this is like uh, wild bees or something. And look at the uh, look at how the roses came out. They're nice, yeah. flat, and paper thin. Well, not the roses, but the leaves. And I've so, got another one here. I think this came out oh, really oops. nice. Really lovely. This is the Prestekrage, was that? Yeah. Daisy. Daisy. Well, this was a little bit destroyed, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I think this is nice as well. Very nice. Even if it's a little bit So, I mean, now we need to go out and pick uh, flowers that we have right now, or, or plants that we have right now for the winter collage. Yeah. I mean, have you thought There's of that? one flower stuck. Have you thought about doing that, or...? Uh... Uh, yeah, I've been thinking, like, winter is kind of hard. Yeah, but so we do have some stuff that come in winter. We have some stuff, maybe. Oh, look at this one. The leaves got a little bended, but that was nice. Yeah, I think it's nice. Very nice. And another so we're one. We're gonna do like the collage will be mix of like another things one. we do with flowers during the seasons. Mm -hmm. So there for winter it could also be some flowers for Christmas maybe. Yeah. So we have to, we have to see and find out what we can do because. There's not much to press in the garden no. <laughs> during winter. Well, but we can, I'm sure we can find something. We if can we find just something that... Use our eyes, use our creativity. Yeah. And we're not going to show you the end results uh, until it's printed in the magazine because, uh, of course, the readers of these magaz this Japanese magazine will be the first to see it. But once we get the magazine here, we we'll can show go you. We through the magazine. Yeah, if and it then happens. We'll Oh, 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 it's happening. Yeah. Be because we've be been a little bit slow now. Yeah. Because we don't travel anymore and we think we have all the time There's in the world. And yeah, you means... know what? That's the problem when we don't have What's a that? when we don't have a deadline. Oh, that's hard. It's actually quite hard. It's really to hard to, to be disciplined. Well, this came out really nice. Yeah, very nice. So, so it's time to do some collages. Mm -hmm. Great things. Some We've got great plans. things ahead of us, and, yeah, I'm, I think this is nice. and I'm looking forward to that. So uh, yeah, so this is a little uh, reveal um, um, of our little pressed plants, and I'm loving that we're using finally using our our flower pl press for its yeah, correct I purpose. Put them back there and just Although it works really well as well <laughs> as don't a, press them uh, now. No, I won't. It works really well as a book press as well. Yeah. So um, And also like when, when I was working with the collages this week and I went through all the magazines we had, I also found another magazine which I will show you. Because oh yeah yeah that one. This yeah. is very interesting. It's a Wisconsin magazine of history. And it's an article about Elizabeth Zimmerman. And when I looked at the picture on the cover, you can see she was knitting the way we do in Norway. Look at how she holds the yarn. It's over the finger and the finger is behind the needles. Yeah. So how could that happen? Because she was English and she was married to a German, but she lived in Wisconsin. So mm. my theory is that she must have learned knitting from her, the German side of her family. Or yeah, she must. Or, or maybe she picked it up from the older Norwegians who remember, went to Wisconsin. Remember, yeah, exactly. Wisconsin is full of not only Norwegians but a lot of Scandinavians. Scandinavians. I think there's yeah. a lot of people from from Finland as yeah. well. In and Wisconsin. they probably knit the same way. Yeah, so probably from there. She is the Julia Child of knitting. Yeah, I think. I mean, she is the Julia. most. Yeah, the she she is the most <laughs> important uh, person in the USA for knitting. She, what she has done for knitting. In America is amazing, yeah, and they said in this article she did a lot of Norwegian and Norwegian ski sweaters, yeah, and also Norwegian and Scandinavian. So they didn't call it Fair Isle; they called it Norwegian knitting, mm. and it, it looks very Norwegian. Some of these sweaters. So this is a nice thing. I will never cut this magazine. Mm. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah, and keep that magazine forever as well. It's really nice. Place. You know what? I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head. Uh, the the Nobel Prize uh, well, laureate. You it. That's yeah, why I had to though. check it. So, what should we do without the internet? Yeah, what should we do without <laughs> internet? Um, so in twenty in two thousand and four, uh, Wangari Matai. So I was yeah, right. Yeah, Wangari. Wangari Matai. Uh, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, and and she was from Kenya. Yeah. Um, and then. Social, environmental, and political activist, and the first African woman to win the Nobel Prize, which was amazing. Yeah. And she asked for Patti LaBelle, 
Um, and that's the cool thing, you know, if you get the Nobel Prize, the Nobel yeah, Peace you can Prize, pick your uh, the Nobel Committee in Norway will ask you, who would you like to, uh, who would you like to have at your Nobel concert? And she specifically asked for Patti LaBelle. And what I remember from that time, I remember that there was some criticism in the newspapers about that because people were not happy with her choice because Patti LaBelle hadn't done anything for, <laughs> for anyone. So it was this huge criticism. Yeah. And then we're reading the newspaper and we're thinking, oh, I mean, this is ridiculous. Wangari Matai herself is asking for Patti LaBelle. And why would you criticize and she, her? And Patti LaBelle... Okay, so Patti LaBelle comes and she just... You know what? Patti LaBelle, she turns it out. Yeah. She stole the show. She, she stole she so, the show. And so then the day after, it was... The only thing people in Norway were talking about was how amazing the concert with Patti LaBelle was. And do you remember, you commented this to the Crown Princess of Norway. You I, asked I her, remember. oh, I remember this. You asked her if she had enjoyed the concert and she said it was amazing. It was the best. Yeah, we did. Remember? Yeah, I remember, yeah. remember? Yeah, that was the first thing you said when you, I think we met her the day after and you said that. And she was like, yeah, this is the, the, the most amazing concert. And that, yeah. that was so good. Yeah. And um, now she will be Patti LaBelle. La yeah. LaPelle. Patti LaPelle. Patti LaPelle now for Patti us. Patti LaPelle for And her. sadly, Wangari Matai died um, on September 11th. Uh, no, sorry, 25th. Mm -hmm. September 25th, 2011. Yeah. So she died, but uh, she still got to, because you know, if you get the Nobel Peace Prize, you become very influential afterwards. So mm -hmm. she got in 20, 20, 2004, so she still had seven years to, to, to work hard for, what, for mm -hmm. her cause before, before she passed away, which is good. Um, but yeah, fa fantastic woman um, and amazing concert. Yeah. Sorry, I just had to go. <laughs> I just had to get that out of my, yeah. out of so my head. So why are you bringing the balls. Oh, okay. So, uh, as all of you know, uh, we've got the calendar going on. Um, um, a lot of people have gotten it through but our... But not VF. these balls. These no. are from the ball book. These are from our balls book. A lot of people are getting the calendar through our VIP link, uh, which is valid through Sunday. Um, we might send out a reminder again on Friday, this Friday, the 20th, I guess. Um, and then on, on, on November 22nd, the calendar will be available at a higher price for everybody to to get, you know, so it's only available for our VIP people who subscribe to our newsletters. Um, and the response has been amazing. Yeah. Um, I have seen a few comments uh, about, what you know, just people have some questions. And I thought that, you know, in the kind of, f first we're going to do a countdown to the calendar, uh -huh. and then we're going to do a countdown to Christmas. So in the countdown to our calendar, um, each week until, well, it's only this week and next week, we're going to do a few Q&A, Q a, a little Q&A of questions people have. Um, okay. So I'm going to do, I, I know the question and I'm sure you know the answer. You, now you mean you want to do it now? Yeah, I want to ask you, a, yeah. Oh, yeah, ask me a question. Because people, people want to know, people have a few questions they want to know. I was, okay? confused. was it like now or was it like in the next week? Before? No, 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 let's just do a little Q&A and yeah. then we'll do a new Q&A next week. Yeah. So um, I was looking at comments, people are very excited about getting the calendar. Um, and um, apparently for the... Uh, for the blocks that we did, for our quarantine knitting that we did in March, mm -hmm. April, and so on, we had a lot of new beginners, yeah. okay? So a lot of new beginners are asking us if uh, the ball is a suitable com uh, project for them or whether it's too complicated. What do you say about that? I think that's actually easier than the, the block. Okay, why? Because you need on the round, so you don't have to purl back when you Correct. do the color yeah, work. Yeah, you're right. So in if you know how to knit with four needles or knit with the fifth needle and have, have your work on four needles, yeah. this is, I think this is easier actually because you don't have to purl. Okay, so there's a follow up question then. Yeah. Be okay, so you're saying, what you're saying is it's easier than a block because you're knitting on the round and you don't have to purl. I totally agree with you on that. Uh, but remember that a lot of people have a fear of the double pointed but needles. Double pointed needles are not dangerous, they don't eat. Or bite or, or, or poke, you. poke you, yeah. Unless you're really, oh, I have a bad story. Okay. Oh, do we have time for that? Yeah, we have all the time in the world. Oh, I mean, this, we've been doing this, this for like a little so more hurtful. than 30 minutes now, but. Uh. There was a woman in, up in the, where I come from. She was like sitting in her kitchen, but she was crocheting. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> and then she got this guy came to visit her and she like, 
she just uh, she didn't put your sh her crocheting down she was walking around in the kitchen with the yarn and the crochet hook in, in like in one hand mm -hmm. and she put on the coffee and was talking and then she kind of forgot about the needle oh no so she she took the needle and placed the needle on the end of the table like the hand with the yarn and the needle on the end of the table and then she was lifting herself up on the table because she just decided to sit on the table. Oh my god. <laughs> and oh my god. She, she, her, the crochet hook went into her. <laughs> what do you call that? Like her, her thigh? thigh? Oh my, that's Can you awful. Ima imagine how hurtful that was to oh get the my. hook out. That's terrible. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, yeah, I'm don't so laugh bad. At I, what I, a terrible story. I'm shocked. Yeah, that's why yeah. I'm laughing. Oh god. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that'll be painful. So that's, it can be hard, but you can actually crochet this, but don't sit on the needle. You, okay, you, yeah. You can crochet them as well. So, Just follow the shark. So the moral of the story is: don't poke yourself with the needles. <laughs> Other than that, double points are not dangerous. If you are a new beginner and you've never knitted on the round, you you. My suggestion is: just go for it. Just, just try it. Circular. No, no, no. If you are a new beginner, yeah, but if you if you really can't do, yeah, hang on, hang on. If you're a real new beginner and you've never done this ever before, go for the five double points and see how it goes. I mean, the worst thing that happens, you start a new one. Yeah, okay, that's that's, that, that, that's my advice. Now, if you have knitted on the round at, and tried the double pointed needles and they weren't for you, we've got two options. What's it called? That whole what magic that? magic loop. <laughs> there you go. Do that. If you do, if you know how to do the magic loop, <laughs> is that like uh, sign language for me? Yeah, that's this is magic loop. So you 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 do this and you do that and then you pull. Um, I'm not a big fan of the magic loop myself, but um, I know for a fact that if you want to knit a Christmas ball using the magic loop, it works. Yeah. Um, so that's an alternative, um, and then the final alternative is to do two circulars. Yeah. That's fine too. Anyway, um, so, as long so, as you get the ball. In yeah, the I mean, it's the end result that counts. Mm -hmm. um, and to give you all a little tip, I mean, it, this goes for new beginners and advanced knitters, okay? Both of you. Um, if you've never done um, a, a ball on the round, um, the, the, the best, my best tip for you guys is before you do a one in color work, just do a plain one first. Yeah, to, to check the pattern. Yeah. Kind of. And do then you can actually do duplicate stitches on top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do it in white, you can do the red yeah. duplicate stitches. So and that's another... I think I've told the story of the blind woman that we met yeah. that designed the most beautiful Christmas balls we ever saw. Um, and no, because actually it was our balls, but she knitted them. Sorry, she knitted them, yeah. And, and they were perfection. And the way she knitted them, because she was blind, she had the pattern memorized in her head. Mm -hmm. And then her assistant had punched holes in the chart. So she felt... So she could pattern. feel the holes. And when she had knitted the ball on the in a solid color, she would duplicate stitch the pattern How on she top. did it, I... I, I... Well, you know, you know what they say. If you lose, if you lose one sense, yeah. all your other senses become so much more powerful. But that so, was, the, those balls were really well, nice. Well, I, I would say they were perfection yeah. and di d divine. So, um, so anyway, knit a ball in the round first. Try out the pattern, um, and then if you're happy, or even if you're not happy, knit a second ball <laughs> in the round without doing the 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 color work. Once you've done two, the pattern starts getting yeah. in your memory. It's easy. Then you just knit from yeah. the chart. And remember, if you are a new beginner and you want to do this, remember, this is instant gratification. Your phone is so disturbing. No, it's okay. Never mind. Are they calling for us in Lillehammer? No. no. Oh, no, no, no. They're just <laughs> reminding us we have an appointment in Lillehammer. <laughs> okay. You know, my corona, my COVID thing is not, I'm not 100% well yet. Mm. And I struggle with memory. Uh, Long-term memory, I mean, I could remember immediately Wangari's first name and that she got the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004, but things that happened a, a day ago or something's going to happen tomorrow, uh, my, my phone helps me now that my memory mm. loss I try, is... I try to take advantage of that. Yeah, you, he does. Like, You're naughty. Sometimes you like... <laughs> I can say that, you, but you said that, and then you're like, no, you yeah, did. yeah, he, keep, yeah, I keep hearing that. You said that yesterday, and I'm like, okay, I guess if am I, I said it, am I really? Yeah, bad? well, now that you're admitting to it, um, <laughs> yeah, what did I say yesterday? <laughs> well, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did we talk yesterday? I don't know. I, I have a, I have a COVID brain right now. You know, people think that like we, are, we should argue a lot because we're like in the same house working together and stuff, but I don't think we spoke much yesterday i don't remember well i was in the living room reading books and and um, i was 
And you were here doing your, your, your art journals. Yeah. And then we had tea together. And lunch. We had lunch, dinner, we watched TV together in the evening, and we had tea in the afternoon. Yeah. So we have rooms, luckily. Yeah, we do. And, and it's so much more fun. more rooms coming. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it fun <laughs> just trying to figure out the new settings for each episode? Yeah. I think we should open the dollhouse next time. Well, we'll see. I mean, shh. Surprise! Well, that was like a spoiler. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, you say that I don't like surprises, and then you spoil everything. <laughs> but I like. I don't like routines. That's so that... true. <laughs> but that was good then that I was able to give you the sit in it for a bit. Oh, sorry, the genealogy story yeah. early on. Yeah. Because uh, now all we have left is uh, formalities and maybe yeah, some more I information. Because I think we have to. I have to put on a shirt, and we have to get the dogs out again. Yeah. So they don't do their. Yeah, because they're not coming with us to Lillehammer because we're going to have a busy day there. Yeah. So yeah, we've got some formalities to do and a little bit of information before oh, the, the formalities. Block. Exactly, yeah. So do do the let's do the block first, then we'll do a little information and then we'll leave. This is the block of the day. This one. And we've decided to call it pressed flowers. This is a pressed flower. Maybe you could go a little or closer. Or it's a pressed uh, clover. It's a traditional pattern. Yeah. Let's but call it's it a pressed flower. Let's call it pressed flower. <laughs> you will find today's blog by going to arnacarlos.com, uh, visiting our blog, and looking at the latest episode of Sit in It for a Bit. This is episode 11, yeah. and this is block 41. So uh, once you get to Sit in It for a Bit, episode 11 on our blog, on our blog, you will see uh, an image of the block quite high up on the page. Click on the image, and the chart will pop up, pop up. and you are able to print that. Then if you continue reading what the blog post says, you'll find the entire uh, pattern for the quarantine knitting and you will find all the other 40 or 40. Yeah, this is pattern 41. So you'll find all the other 40 uh, blocks there as well as this one. Um, and we have some uh, news. Uh, this is block 41. And next week um, we will do the last block for 2020. And we will stop at block 42. And then we have to discuss what we're going to do uh, after that, if we're going to continue the blocks or not. So we're going to have that conversation to figure mm -hmm. out. I know you want to continue. Yeah, so we I want to finish my blanket because there's still yeah. some blocks missing. And I think I don't want to knit some of the old ones over again. I think I want to have different blocks. Yeah, so more than likely, we are going to release uh, new blocks uh, but to see how we do it, maybe in another way, yeah. or we have to... We're going to go, we're going to think about it and we're going to figure it out. And then uh, in 2021, there will be some, a few more blocks, but block number 42. So the one next week is going to be the last one. And then we do the ball. Yeah. And the reason is because uh, our uh, quarantine, oh, sorry, our sit and knit for a bit podcast will become uh, a daily occurrence from uh, September 1st. So from September 1st until, jeez, September. I mean December, obviously. <laughs> you see, this is my COVID brain not working. Let's start okay, again. Let's do it simple. Let's start again. So on 1st of December, we start open the calendar. Exactly. So a one ball a day, keep the doctor away. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of this COVID but we have brain. Like, we, have to talk, we have like one advent before, don't we? That's like advent. Yeah. The so day before. For the first one? Yeah, oh. first of Advent is on um, November 29th, which is a Sunday. Then on uh, December 1st, which is a Tuesday, that's when we start our calendar. And every day from December 1st to December 24th, we will reveal a new Christmas uh, <laughs> ball every day uh, and tell you some fun stories yeah. because knitting and storytelling is a very important part of the Norwegian tradition. Yeah. And we hope you will enjoy it. Uh, if you want to follow and knit with us, there's a calendar and it will be released. Uh, it's released to our VIPs. So that means our mailing list subscribers and it will be released to everybody um, on November 22nd. So you yeah. can all get it if you want it. And if you don't want it, you can just hang out and knit anything else, whatever you have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's okay, the Carlos. news. And also I want to remind everybody that on November 25th, at 6.30 uh, British time, we are doing a virtual event with Selvedge magazine. Yeah, that, that I forgot about that. Yeah, that you really don't want to miss because it's all about Scandinavian knitting. We are there to hold a lecture at Anemu Sunbo, the most amazing uh, and the best, uh, well, she is she an knows everything about knitting. Yeah, she knows everything she about knitting and it, cultural history. So she's going to hold a lecture. You do not want to miss her lecture 
I can guarantee. She's holding a lecture, we're holding a lecture, and Cecilia Teller, another Norwegian designer, is also holding a lecture. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to miss this. Uh, if you want to sign up for this event, go to our blog, uh, find the sit and knit for a bit episode 11, where you also have the block, and you can click on that link to sign up, okay? So that's the information, and now Arne, I will leave you with a yeah, formalities. Because now your head is boiling. I feel like there was so much information coming out. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's hard was for I you. Was I boring again? No, but it's hard for I you. I was boring or boiling? You were boiling. Boiling. <laughs> boring again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you ask. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, I, but I, I know it's that... hard for you to remember all these things. It's like... Well, that's why I have a note over there, so that I can remember it. I can see it. <laughs> Even the glasses. Yeah, well, before, co before COVID, uh, I could remember, I, I had everything in my head. I had my whole, our whole calendar for a month in my head. And now, I'm lucky if I remember uh, which is the right foot and the left foot yeah. when I put my shoes on. It's, uh, it's, it's tough having had the COVID and having experienced the issues with concentration and memory. Yeah, so let me finish then, because like... Don't you feel sorry for me? I feel so sorry for you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm getting better, I promise. Okay, so uh, formalities? Uh, oh, yeah, if you like our videos, put your thumbs up and put on your notifications because then you will have like the bell is ringing every time there's a new video and then you won't miss an episode. And if you're on the mailing list, you will have this uh, mail about the balls. Well, that and all the other interesting the other thing that things that goes on. So get on our mailing list. It's worth it. And uh, what more? And the Arnold um, Carlos family is a large but very happy family. So we would love it if you would... <laughs> Be a subscriber together with everybody else who See, who is. you remember some things. I do, yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to bringing you a new episode of Sit in It for a Week. Uh, <laughs> sit in It for a Week. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to sitting and knitting for a week, obviously. But but we look forward to seeing you next week again for a new episode of Bit and Sit for a Knit. Yeah, sit and Bit for a Knit. Yeah. No, Sit and Knit for a Bit. Sit and Knit for uh, a no Bit. No, stupid. I yeah. think we have to leave. As we have to get the dogs out, we have to leave. We have to get those yeah. vest, vest coats. Yeah. And we'll be coats. waistcoats. Waistcoats. The double breasted coat. waistcoats with a tartan motif. Yeah, with a lapel. With a lapels, exactly. Okay. So, so see looking you for next you, time. forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> see you. Bye. <laughs> People think we're drinking. Uh, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're driving. <laughs>